One thing I often look at when, I, when I'm using a scope is RF that's being modulated. And so today we have a Tektronix 475 scope with a 200 megahertz input bandwidth and an HP 54645D digital scope with a 100 megahertz rated bandwidth. Let's take a look at how these guys look under RF modulation. I'm using my IC736 ICOM radio and I'll start out on lower sideband on 40 meters with a dummy load. W6EL testing, testing one, two. Audio, audio. Hello, hello, hello. Now you can see the way the analog scope fills in the trace is really different than the way the digital scope does. Let me turn up my intensity here a little bit. There we go. Audio. The analog scope actually is drawing inside here at a very high rate. The digital scope is just filling this in with poorly sampled data. So if you were working on something like this and you were, say, aligning the audio circuit in a radio, you really are going to want the cleanest view of this as you can get. You want to know where the modulation hits the bottom. And up here, audio. You can see it pretty easily. Audio. Here, I don't know. Audio. A little bit harder to trigger as well. All right, let's take a look at AM because AM is where this gets really interesting. Here we are on amplitude modulation. We're on 40 meters. You can see the carrier. And look how the carrier looks in the analog scope compared to the digital one. I'll add some modulation in here. Oh, audio. Let's zoom out one step. Uh, let's see. Audio. Both at one millisecond per division. Audio. Obviously, Got some good modulation here. <laughs> hello, hello. Uh, audio. You can see on the analog scope. Uh, audio. Right where it, it hits the crest. Uh, audio. Down here. Uh, audio. You can pause it and kind of get an idea. That's the same waveform, but it sure is nasty looking compared to the analog scope. Uh, audio. Look how clear that is. Uh, very easy for alignment. That's your uh, classic AM audio test right there. When this waveform, oops, when this waveform hits the bottom. That's when you reach 100% modulation. I'm just varying the microphone distance. Look how difficult it is to see that down here. Just not even the, uh, the same world there. All right, now let's take a look at the carrier because carriers are important to look at as well. Let's just back this off a little bit with no modulation. Still on AM, 40 meters. There's the carrier. And you can see the modulation on it. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. We go in here. Oh, where is it? There it is. Okay. So again, it's not as exciting to see a carrier under modulation when you zoom into the carrier. Gee, it gets bigger, right? <laughs> Look how different it looks, though. The analog one shows a nice, smooth transition, and the digital one is just... It's not glitching, but it doesn't look as nice in this area, right? Now, of course, we can do other things, which are nice on here. I can look at the frequency. It's already activated, I guess. 
right there. Seven point, I'm actually on 7.1556. Yeah, it doesn't read it that well, but it's good enough. I could look at a Fourier transform if we wanted to try and see this signal in harmonics. Let's try that. Auto scale it. There we go. Audio. <laughs> Maybe seeing some harmonics there under modulation. Let's see if we can measure them real quick. Cursor, fine peaks. Audio. Yeah, there it is. Something at 25 megahertz. Huh? So yeah, some advantages of a digital scope, but um, definitely some of the analog one too. Uh, maybe you just uh, need both. <laughs> so you can see both at the same time. Nothing wrong with that, right? Uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Which scope do you like better if you had to pick one? 7-3.